This video is going to be a continuation of the first, longer, more in-depth video I made about heavy metals and organic cannabis growing. I actually didn't plan on making another video, but I had some testing come across my desk after filming the first video. These test results got me thinking more about the subject and the fact that maybe we need to continue to delve into this a little bit deeper. On the first video, I touched on not following the trends you see on YouTube and Instagram, etc. I didn't go into detail about this in that video, as it was more of an overview type video. It was a cliff notes of sorts, to get your feet wet on the subject. That being said, after filming that video, we got some test results back from a customer that warranted another deeper video be made about following these trends you see on social media. First and foremost, you need to realize that most of the trends you see on social media are geared towards home growers. Some companies are making the bulk of their money from people growing at home. Since a large portion of their customer base are growing at home, their final product isn't getting tested for heavy metals. With this in mind, heavy metals accumulation isn't really a part of the equation for them. For us, this isn't the case. The bulk of our customers grow commercially and need to pass strict testing, so everything we do revolves around heavy metals content of inputs like soil amendments, water, the air, the building itself, and even the ground a facility is built on. We have spent tens of thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours trying to traverse the heavy metals issue when it comes to commercial organic cannabis cultivation. We are starting to slowly develop some rough guides with product usage and techniques on what can help customers be more successful when it comes to passy heavy metals testing and organic cannabis production. There are no set rules or chart you can look at and say, if you do A and B, then you won't fail your testing. There are too many factors at play to have a chart like this. It just wouldn't work. Every situation is different and you have to look at the entire grow as its own ecosystem and analyze every aspect for potential heavy metals contamination issues. A lot of times it's a combination of things that add up to a fail. With these things in mind, other companies aren't as concerned with this aspect of organic cannabis production. For this reason, they create products and put out schedules that many people just blindly follow. The problem is commercial growers then start using these same schedules and using these same products and then run into big problems when it comes time to test their final product. I wanted to say a side note before I go further. I personally don't use white papers as reference. I prefer to have actual data collected from the garden I'm speaking about. Using a white paper to justify something I am saying or doing doesn't make a lot of sense to me because without proper testing, you're only speculating that what that white paper says is truly happening in the garden you're speaking about. Not to discount research papers, but I try to stick to the actual receipts to keep things simpler. This brings us to this recent test that came across my desk a few days ago. After posting this video, I got these results. This is from a family friend's garden, and I've known this person their entire life. We all go way back, so I was able to get more background than usual when dealing with a normal customer. These guys have recently started a new commercial grow. They had been doing R&D for the past two years in soil beds though, and they wanted to test the old soil to see if they could use it in the new commercial garden. These beds they were testing were our soil. They did, however, follow the trends they see on social media for re-amending and feeding. I spoke with them about what they were doing and told them that it's not a good idea to use these products and that eventually they will fail testing. I had no idea that these guys would win first place though. Even I was surprised and impressed by the test results once they hit my desk. If there ever was a competition for most arsenic in a soil test from indoor beds, these guys would win hands down. They were more than double what we have ever seen. The arsenic levels were 10.53 parts per million. Truly a stupendous number. Obviously this isn't a competition that anybody wants to win. But the saving grace was they didn't have to use the soil for the new grow. They just didn't want it to go to waste. After we reviewed the results, we decided that it's just too high of a number to continue to use the soil for cannabis production. So I told them to use it outside for some veggies. Outside the rains could leach the heavy metals out and the food would be safe to eat. That way at least it doesn't go to waste. Fast forward, it was 8 a.m. and I had just stepped out of the shower and I got a call from the owner of this farm. He was extremely pissed off and actually wanted to confront the company that makes the products they were using. I told them this company didn't stipulate that if you use this product for commercial cannabis production that you would pass heavy metals testing. I also told them that this company mostly makes money from home growers and that ultimately it wouldn't matter if you called to bitch them out. I understand their frustration and anger, but to be honest, it's your garden and you're in charge of how it turns out. Unless there's written documentation that emphatically states you will pass testing in your state when it comes to heavy metals, then there's not a lot you can do. This is why we stress that you test every single input you use in your garden. 
I don't care if it's molasses in a tea, your water, soybean meal, compost, or even microbial products. Everything has to be tested, period. No exceptions. If you don't do that and you fail, it's your own damn fault. The good thing about the farm I've referenced here is that they changed their ways on their new setup from the start. They do not use the pre-made top dress blends that made them become number one at a competition. They didn't even want to win. They're also doing soil testing and sap testing, so they only add what the plants need. On top of that, they're doing heavy metals testing on their soil between runs to make sure heavy metal levels don't climb and become an issue. The irony of this situation is we also performed a soil test to see how out of balance the soil was. And there were excesses and deficiencies everywhere. So using this product didn't only make the soil so hot with arsenic it was effectively unusable, it also threw the soil completely out of whack nutrient-wise. We weren't actually all that surprised. This is why pre-made top dress blends aren't a good idea. I wanted to do this follow-up video to highlight this case with this customer and to show that following the trends when you're a home grower is way different than when you're a commercial cultivator. When you make that switch to commercial cultivation, you need to analyze everything you are doing, using or plan on doing or using. Whether you are currently running an organic commercial cannabis grow or are preparing to start one, I would always advise to set aside a healthy budget for heavy metals testing for everything from day one. Having this data on hand is crucial to making the right decisions that could ultimately decide if you're a successful cultivator or you're talking about how you used to cultivate but don't anymore.